another video. If you are new to the channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and go check out our Instagram pages where I post daily original photos on our life and a lot of our animals that we have going on here. In the last video I just posted, um, if you didn't go watch that, it'll be linked in the description below. I got bit by one of our hatchlings. So I thought it would be a good idea to do a video on why people get bit, how to avoid getting bitten, and then what to do if you do get bitten. What are some of the techniques and tips and tricks to kind of get that snake off of you? So those are the three things that we're gonna be talking about in today's video. So let's address the first issue. Why do snakes wanna bite you? There could be a variety of reasons, but there are two specific reasons that a snake would wanna bite you most of the time. And that is gonna be either a defensive strike or a feeding response. Now, if you didn't see my other video, I will throw up a picture right here of this little baby hatchling. Um, you can tell the way this hatchling is secured onto the end of my finger and wrapped around that this was a feeding response. I kind of knew this taking the snake out. I already knew that I was probably gonna get bitten and I even say it in that video, the snake is gonna bite me and sure enough, she did. Those are the two main reasons that snakes wanna bite you. Now, how can we avoid being bitten? And this is gonna come down to knowing your snake individually as well as knowing your specific species of snake. Different species have been known to have different temperaments, have different feeding responses. For instance, if you have a large constrictor, let's say a Burmese, a retic, an anaconda, you are gonna know right off the bat, keeping that snake, that those snakes have very, very strong feeding responses. And you have to be able to identify your individual snakes behavior and know their body language and you have to be able to know the difference for when they are in a feeding mode and they are ready to eat versus when it is safe to handle them so that is something that you learn from being an experienced keeper now just to throw that out there i don't have any large constrictors like the species i just named off the only species that i have that will get anywhere of similar to that size is gonna be our Suriname True Red Tail Boa. She probably will max out at 10, maybe 12 feet if we're lucky. But right now she only is about three and a half feet. But just recently, her feeding response has skyrocketed. There are some days where I have to pay attention to her behavior and her posturing to know if it is a good day to handle her or not. Most of the time when we are approaching feeding day, you can tell she will pop out of her hide and she will come up and be looking straight at the top. And most of the time, if you even try to peek open the top of her tub, um, she is ready to strike at the top. You know that that's not a good day. Do not stick your hands in there whatsoever. And there are other days where she just sits on the bottom and she's chilling and you can get in there and get her out. So this is where you have to know your species and your individual snake. Now, most of the ball pythons behind us, ball pythons are relatively docile. Every once in a while, you do get a jerk in the mix, and we do have a few jerks, but most of the time, you can cover their head, you can grab them from a different angle, and you don't really have to worry about getting bit. It's pretty much avoidable. We also have different species of snakes, like this emerald tree boa behind us, and I know that this snake has not been handled a whole lot. She is over four years old. I do not mess with her. I do not try to handle her. Every once in a while, I'll touch her. Um, she sits there and stares at us, but I know this is not a snake that is gonna be handleable by any means. For her to get her out of her cage, I utilize a snake hook and try to avoid contact or have my hands anywhere near her face because I know her temperament is not a good one. And some of the other species we keep are gonna be a woma python, we have a carpet python, we have a black pine snake. Now, all of these species are known to be cage aggressive. And when you open their tub, they are gonna be a little bit more food aggressive inside their enclosure. And we have done snake training. And that is lifting the snake out with a snake hook. And once they are out of their enclosure and they realize that they are not being fed, then they are a little more handleable. And again, this is knowing your specific species and their temperament. 
So these are all things that I have learned through research and watching other keepers. Now again, I am not an expert snake keeper or even reptile keeper. I do have experience with keeping large lizards, but I am fairly new in the snake keeping realm compared to a lot of people, but I have done my due diligence. I have done a lot of research in making sure that I am caring for my animals properly as well as handling. Within this learning experience, it is inevitable. You are gonna get bit at some point. Some people are really good at avoiding this, others aren't. So far in my snake keeping journey, I have gotten bit twice by two of our smaller hatchlings and I have gotten tagged twice. Now, the difference between getting tagged and actually getting bitten is a tag is when a snake postures and just comes out and kind of just grabs on and lets go real quick. That is what uh, most snake keepers refer to as a tag. And while it hurts, it's quick, it's, it's done, and you don't have to worry about it. Um, I have gotten tagged by one of our larger ball pythons, and I've also gotten tagged by our blood python. Uh, the blood python one definitely hurt a little bit more than the ball python. Uh, she is quite a bit bigger. She is the one with the respiratory infection that I have been treating, and she doesn't really like me very much right now. Hope maybe that'll change in the future, but right now not so much. When I have gotten bitten by the two hatchlings, this is inevitable. Hatchlings have a very strong feeding response. If you're if you're lucky, it makes feeding a lot easier but you also run the risk of getting bit until they become a little bit more handleable. And this is an innate response in the wild as babies. They are more vulnerable to predators. So this is just their natural instinct kicking in until they get used to things and get used to you handling them. I have gotten tagged, as you saw the other day, uh, <laughs> in the other video uh, by one of our ball python hatchlings and she latched on and wrapped me and would not let go. I have also been bitten by our baby Woma Python when she was about four or five weeks old right after we got her. She kind of latched on to my thumb a little bit, but she quickly let go after about a minute. I didn't have to intervene at all to get her off. This is where we are going to jump into the tips and tricks and techniques on how to get them off if they will not let go. My husband got bitten by our uh, Woma Python about a month ago and we had to utilize this technique as well as I had to utilize this technique the other day when the ball python hatchling would not let go of my finger. So like I said, I do not keep large constrictors, so I have never been bitten by a large constrictor, so I don't know what that feels like. I can only imagine that it is very painful. Like I said, I have been bitten by smaller snakes. It does hurt no matter if it's small or big. If you are not aware of any kind of human anatomy, your hands are the source of one of your main five senses touch and your hands have a lot more nerve endings so you can sense touching things and so you can sense the environment around you. So especially when you get bitten in the hands, it is going to hurt a lot more than getting bitten anywhere else. And I can attest to that because I've gotten tagged in the arm and it wasn't that bad. But being bitten on my finger the other day, that was quite painful. And I have tattoos, so you know, I, I know what it feels like to be pricked and I can tell you hands hurt a lot more than anywhere else because you have so many more nerve endings. Now let's talk about the tips and tricks on how to get them off if they will not let go. So like I said, my husband was bitten by our Woma Python last month and she had a very strong feeding, feeding response and she would not come off. The very first technique is you can sit there, not move and just wait it out. A lot of times, uh, once they bite you and they constrict around you, if they are gonna constrict, hold still, do not move. The more you move, the more they, con they are going to constrict and that is an innate response. That is what they do to prey when they want to kill it. The more it moves, the more they constrict until that prey item dies. So wherever you get bit, don't move. Sit still, they will stop constricting and they will stop munching their teeth into you because obviously they don't wanna let that prey item get away. So that is the first thing. The second thing is, you can try to wait it out. Sometimes if you sit there, they will eventually let go because they are gonna realize you are not a prey item. You are not something that they can consume. You are way too large. Uh, the second thing, if you wait it out a few minutes and that doesn't work, um, you can run them under cold water. A lot of times, so for instance, the ball python the other day, 
I tried to wait it out for about five minutes. She wasn't letting go. So I took her to the sink and I started running her under cold water. Now, what I do is I will start with the tip of the head. Sometimes that splash of cold water on their head will kind of, oh shoot, and they will let go and you can get them off. It, it took about five minutes under cold water and I had to get that cold water into her mouth. And you just kind of twist them in order to get that cold water in their mouth and they will eventually let go. You want to let them let go on their own. You do not want to rip the snake off of you. For one, it's gonna cause more damage to your skin, your tissue. Two, you risk breaking off that snake's teeth, which is not good for the snake, and it'll get stuck in your skin, and then you have to try to pick that out. That's not fun either. So always try to let them come off on their own because their teeth are gonna be really sunken into you. Now the third technique is not something that I would usually recommend, but if you have a snake that will not get off of you. I have not personally tried this technique, but I've heard of other people trying it with success. It will not hurt your snake, is Listerine. And all you do is get a little bit in their mouth. They don't like the taste of it and they will let go. Uh, the only thing with the Listerine is you need to make sure that you thoroughly rinse your snake's mouth out after this happens. Like I said, I have never used this particular technique. Uh, the cold water has worked for us so far. I hope I never have to use the Listerine or any other products like that. So again, those are the few little tips and tricks that I can give you if you do get bit as well as avoiding. If you are not comfortable with your snake, this is something if you want to keep snakes, you have to get over uh, or you can use a snake hook. Most of us, you kind of just have to get over it. It's not saying that we are not fearful. I can tell you, I am still fearful of a lot of our snakes in our rack, but I overcome that fear every day by just getting in there and doing it because of my passion for my animals and my reptile keeping. All right, well, that is it for today's video. I hope this information uh, was helpful and hopefully either avoid getting bit or if you do getting that snake off of you as quickly and as safely as possible. So again, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, you can always leave them down in the description below and I will see you in the next one. Stay safe, stay sane, get out there and make your own footprints. Thank you for watching. Bye.